Welcome to Ginny's Horse Product Review. I'm Ginny and today I'm going to share with you my top five tips for keeping your old horse comfortable in the horse trailer. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that my main trail horse is a 25 year old Morgan Gelding. He's got a little bit of arthritis and I tend to baby him and be really conservative and take really good care of him. He's been in my family since he was a yearling and it's just really important for me to keep him comfortable um, on the trail for as many years as possible and part of that is making sure that he's comfortable on the trailer. Bamboozle hasn't always been <laughs> the seasoned veteran on a horse trailer that he is now and I like to credit some of that to my management of him on the trailer especially into his golden years and just making sure that he's comfortable well taken care of and getting off that trailer fresh not stiff and feeling ready to hit the trail when we get to a new place. So definitely stay tuned if you want these five tips of how I keep Bamboozle comfortable in the trailer and just some options for you if you have an older horse, a senior horse, um, you know, a horse with some arthritis or other things going on that could help to make sure that you can keep them comfortable on the trailer and get to your destination, um, you know, sound and feeling good. My first tip for keeping an arthritic or an older horse comfortable on a horse trailer is going to be preloading with an anti-inflammatory. And obviously this isn't right for everybody's situation and this isn't even something that I do all the time with Bamboozle. This is an occasional use thing for me. And this is definitely a conversation that you wanna have with your veterinarian. If your horse um, has the amount of arthritis that maybe sometimes working with a farrier can be uncomfortable, this is probably something that you wanna take into account if you're moving him somewhere new and he's gonna be on a trailer depending on even what type of trailer you're hauling in. But this is a good tool to have. Anything that you can do to help your horse from being in pain or uncomfortable during that trailer ride or stepping off that trailer unsound or in pain, this is just one more tool in your pocket. Again, this is a conversation to have with your veterinarian, whether it's a gram of butte or some Prevacox for a little while beforehand. This is case by case. This isn't just if you have an old horse, throw some butte at them. I'm not advocating for that and I'm not a vet and definitely don't do that. But obviously, if you do have an older horse or horse with arthritis that you are going to move or trailer, ask your vet what they think and what would be a good protocol for you. And maybe it's case by case, maybe it's something you do in the winter, maybe it's for a particularly long trip if you're you know, moving to a new place to live, a new state across country like I have in the past, and you want your horse to be as comfortable as possible. This is just an option to have. My second tip, and this is even more important if your horse is on any kind of anti-inflammatories, is to not neglect their gut health. So I actually have another video which is all about preventing ulcers when you're traveling with your horses, and I have five tips for how to do that, and it includes things like forage, hydration, um, some really good supplements that I believe in, and basically just making sure that you're also taking care of that gut when your horse is on the trailer. We know that when horses are being trailered or they're going places, they have the potential very easily to develop ulcers, and that's something that you don't want to have happen in your older horse, especially if you're already having weight gain issues or you're concerned with condition. You definitely don't want them getting ulcers and losing any further weight on the trailer. So always, always, always be thinking about your horse's gut when you're trailering, and you can definitely go check out my video that I did a few weeks ago about that. My third tip for comfortably trailering your older horse is to provide them with a box stall if you can. And I know this isn't everybody's position and it wasn't mine for years until I upgraded and got a new trailer. But now I have a two plus one and I have a trailer tour of that if you wanna check that out. Basically it's um, two straight load stalls and then a box stall in front of that. So whenever I go anywhere that's more than an hour, like if it's just in town, bamboozle's fine in a straight load. If it's gonna be more than an hour in the trailer, he gets a full box stall. And that means that he can move around, he can ride in the way that's most comfortable for him, whether that's facing backwards or you know shifting his weight in any way that he feels comfortable. And anytime we stop, he can walk around and he's got the room to move so his joints aren't just like locking up you know, like they would be in a straight or a slant load for a long period of time. And this is just something that I think can really help your arthritic horse. This is also something to think about if you're thinking about getting your senior horse shipped 
somewhere because a lot of shipping companies can offer box stalls. It's an additional charge, but I think it's so worth it if your older horse is gonna be on a trailer for any length of time, they're gonna be so much more comfortable in a box stall than just like wedged into a slant or a stray load chute. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. If you're shopping for horse shippers and you know figuring out what your budget is, your older horse is gonna appreciate that extra investment in more room in a box stall. And another thing to think about is maybe if you're trailer shopping, stock trailers, if that's in your budget, if you're not, you know, looking for something like a two plus one like I have, or even like a slant load where you can remove the divider or a straight load where you can remove the divider if you're going to be trailering your senior horse. Again, this is all case by case basis up to you. Um, but longer distance trips, I feel like Bamboozle is, he's just walking off that trailer fresh every day. In 2017, we moved from North Carolina to Idaho uh, with three horses and we had our two younger horses in the straight load parts of the trailer and Bamboozle had the box stall and we were on the road I think at most up to almost 12 hours on some days and he got off that trailer fresh not stiff I mean you wouldn't have even been able to tell that he had been on a trailer for that many hours and you know this is all part of my protocol but he did really great and I know that having a box stall helped him to you know not get those joints all locked up when when a horse has arthritis like the worst thing for them is to be is to be stationary so you definitely want them to be able to move around my fourth tip particularly applies to long distance trips and that's taking lots of breaks and i don't know what your trailer situation is like or what kind of stops you've planned along the route but this may entail getting your horse off and walking him around every couple of hours. Again, we talk about arthritis and older horse joints. You don't want them in a stationary position for hours and hours on end. That's really painful and it makes them, you know, even stiffer. So you definitely want to make sure you're taking breaks. And one of the nice things, I know I keep going back to this box stall, but the nice thing is when you do have a horse in a box stall, if you're in bad weather, if you're, you know, on the side of the road, wherever you're at, if it's not a really good place to get your horse out of the trailer, he can at least move around some and he's not just stuck in one place. So again, if you're planning a trip and it's long distance for an older horse, make sure to take those breaks. Give them a rest from, you know, just that stationary position. And especially, you know, in the trailer, they've got to do a lot of work to ride back there. It's not just like you or me sitting in the car. They're shifting their weight and engaging muscles to hold, you know, to, to go with however you're driving. So it's really important that they get a break from that, even if it's just pulling over for a little while. Finally, my fifth tip for keeping your old horse comfortable in the trailer, and this is giving them recovery time after a trailer ride. And so like for me, when we're moving cross country and things like that, you could easily do it day after day after day after day, one day in the trailer after another. But when we move, we like to plan our route, have a day of travel, and then do like two days recovery. And we may even trail ride on those days. But what's important is that your horse gets a few days where he can be turned out, even if that's in an arena, um, you know, I know a lot of these places, horse motels, campgrounds, things like that, you get a box stall or a small corral if you're lucky. So try to find those places where you can turn them out, even if it's in a round pen or an arena somewhere. And in a lot of places, it may just be hiking your horse, but for old horses particularly, I feel like they need at least a day or two after a significantly long day in the trailer to recover and, you know, really kind of rest from from how taxing dry, riding in a trailer is like i was telling you about our trip from north carolina to idaho that was a two-week trip for us and we would drive a day and then stop a couple of days at campgrounds and things like that we would trail ride and hike and do all kinds of fun stuff but i can tell you that if you saw a picture of bamboozle the beginning of the trip and a picture at the end he lost no weight he looked incredible he was fresh he was sound and this is how, you know, through all these different measures and things that I do to try to keep him comfortable and focus on stuff like that, I've been able to make sure that when we do trailer and do long distance with an older horse, um, he's not going to show up on the other end, skin and bones, you know, crippled from the trip. It's really important for me to bring a sound, fresh, 
healthy, happy horse from one point, you know, point A to point B. And this is just, this is just how I do that. If you travel with an old horse, maybe you're competing with an old horse still, or you're like me, you're a camper and a trail rider and your, your old horse is still going down the trail. Tell me how you keep them comfortable in the comments. I want to hear what you're doing. How do you keep them comfortable in the trailer? You know, what kind of methods are you using? What is your trailer like? I would love to hear about it. Leave me a comment. If this video was helpful, hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you don't miss next week's video. I'm going to tell you why you should never trailer without a fly mask on your horse. Until next time, happy trails.